Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today, if you're not familiar where this is, we are currently in Las Vegas. So that is the Bellagio and we're gonna try to run it up. We are most likely gonna be playing there, make sure of a few places. I don't know, we'll find out. But most importantly, we wanna run hot, build up a stack and hopefully get some good content for the vlog. As always, before we jump into it, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And also engage with me and leave a comment. It really helps out the channel. All right, guys. I'll see you guys in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's heavy. F -f -f Famous love. Yeah, I gotta keep it trilly on my soul. I'm the most selfish person that I know. Here we go down the rabbit hole. Got a couple carrots from my neck. Self-respect. When you out of line, you put yourself in jack. Oh. Welcome back everyone. So today we are back in a very familiar place. We are back in Vegas at the Bellagio, jumping into the 1-3 cash game streets. As always, before we get into the hands, please hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps out the channel and I thank you in advance. I literally came right off of the plane to a lift and directly to the Bellagio and it definitely seems like the poker gods are awarding that decision as I immediately look down at pocket queens. So I'm going to start with the standard open the $10 here and the action is going to fold around to the cutoff who's going to come along and everyone else is going to decide to fold. So with about $20 in, we're going to go heads up to a flop out of position. That's going to come jack six, 10, two hearts. Now this is a very dynamic flop and it hits my opponent pretty hard here. So with my over pair, I'm going to go ahead and size up, hoping that he'll call with one of those draws, maybe a gut shot top pair. But unfortunately, he just doesn't have anything and instantly folds. I would then pick up ace queen offsuit, blind versus blind, and I make a standard race to 15 and a very sticky player who loves to bet when check two calls. So I stick to the plan and check and flow, and this player right on cue bets 15. So I think check call is the right play here. I want to keep this player's bluffs in and allow her to continue to stab on many turns and rivers. And with top top, I have a very underrepped hand. But unfortunately for us, both the turn and the river are gonna check through, and this player is gonna announce 10 high, and we're gonna roll over the winner. So I definitely wondered if I could have value bet that spot there, but looking back at it, I mean, 10 high was never gonna give me any action unless they had me beat. Maybe a smaller queen might have paid me off, but they probably would have bet the turn or the river as well. So. It's unfortunate, but I do think check call is the right play there. Just that this player had 10 high and couldn't do much. So then over the next few hours, I would go pretty card dead and just lose pot after pot. And they weren't even like super huge, just kind of medium sized pots, but started to dwindle me down here to about $140 in my stack. So with about 46 bigs is where I started this hand effective. And we're going to have an open to $10. And I'm going to peel back a premium ace king off here. I'm going to three bet to $30 here. And I already told myself why I'm making this play. If he happens to rip, I'm going to call it off. I'm not going to be putting more than 20% of my stack in and folding. That is never going to be the right recipe. And if he rips, it's going to be pretty gross. But I'm just going to have to hope that he has queens or jacks maybe even ace king as well, but he does not jam or call. He decides to put in the four bet and he four bets a very small, basically a min four bet to $75. Oh boy, this definitely feels like aces. So hear me out. I know I just went over that really nice dialogue about what I was thinking in real time and what I was going to do if this player just jams. But now that he hits me with the min four bet pretty much, this is so strong. 
I mean, yeah, he could have aces here. I do have ace king and I do have a blocker. So I'm just hoping he has queens or jacks, kings. Maybe we have the same hand, ace king. I'm just really hoping I'm not completely stone dead. And you know what? I did not come all the way to Las Vegas to fold monsters pre-flop. So I'm all in. And when you make a play like this, you want to avoid the snap call, which we do not in this case. He snaps us off, which is always bad news. And he does indeed have aces and we are drawing dead on the turn. And what even is a little bit more of a needle is we actually get there on the river and pair up the king. So things are not going our way and we're going to need to regroup fast to try to rebound in this session. So the takeaway here is learn from my mistake. When somebody four bets you pre-flop, that is very, very strong. Trust me, learn from my mistake in this spot. When you have ace king here, ace queen, jacks, tens, queens, just pick them up, throw them in the muck, because unfortunately it's never gonna be good in that spot. You're always just lighting money on fire. And truthfully, players in these games at these stakes are not gonna be making these moves light. When they say they have it, just believe them, fold, and live to fight another day. And then shortly after, we would get involved in a pot with the same player that just stacked us. He would raise a pot to 13, and I'm in the low jack, and now it's my turn to look down at pocket aces. So we're obviously gonna be putting in the three bet here for value, and I'm really hoping that he has something that he can call us here with. Even more, I hope he has something here that he wants to four bet again with, because this time we know we do have the goods, and this is the perfect time for a double. And unfortunately for us, he just folds. So we do get a little unlucky here as he just probably didn't have much, but very indicative of how this session has gone so far. I definitely seem to be zigging when I'm supposed to be zagging. Then I would go through a stretch where I picked up some premiums. I picked up pocket kings and ace king suited and got two walks back to back. This is definitely just one of those sessions where I really just can't get any traction. I can't seem to get out of first gear. We are definitely gonna continue to battle and see if we can get ourselves unstuck and possibly even make some profit in this session. As we move on to the next hand of the vlog, in this one, we're gonna find ourselves in the big blind and we're gonna look down at ace queen offsuit. So the action is gonna fold around to the button who is an older gentleman who's been very snug so far and he's gonna open to 13. I do think a three bet is in order here with this hand. I think it's a little too strong most of the time, just a flat, but given the circumstance, now that I'm thinking about it, this gentleman has been pretty snug and this is his first open. So yeah, it's on the button, but I think I should still give it a little bit more respect just based on how he's played so far. So yeah, I think a flat call might've been a little bit better in this spot. I just wanted to take the more aggressive route because most of the time when I miss, I want to have the betting lead. But I also don't love my three bet sizing there. I think I went way too small, especially out of position. It's a little over 2x only. I think it should definitely be close to 45 or 50, especially because I'm going to be out of position. And we're going to completely whiff this board here. Yeah, we do have some overs and backdoor spades, but it's definitely going to be a board that's going to favor his calling range. So I'm going to continue trying to tell my story that I have a big hand and I'm going to continuation bet here for $35. Now I'm hoping just to take this pot down right now, but that's not what's going to happen here. I'm actually going to get raised to $100. And right after I made my C bet, the first thing I kind of thought about was why am I betting? Typically you should only be betting for value or betting as a bluff, or maybe sometimes you have a merge bet where you have the best hand, but it's very vulnerable and it can be beaten by the river. But in this case, I couldn't really come up with a reason of why I was betting, especially versus this player type. So looking back at it, because of these things, I definitely think a check is the right play. Check and evaluate. See what my opponent does. See if it goes check, check. I might be able to see the turn for free. And who knows? Ace queen still might be the best hand. And getting blown off of my equity would not be great. So I'm really not happy how I played this hand, really from start to finish. But with ace high here, there's really nothing I can do. I just have to fold and look for a better spot.
up shop. Think I got the message across. Came for the titles and press of the watch. We played the levels of Letterman and Jocks. Pins on the jacket, the man's abundant. The point of the road was being and rugged. Hushing, I'm plotting on pants in London. The products are not being scared of some judgment. Gotta stay in the cut. Cut you off if you ain't making the cut. Couldn't tell you who the hell is behind us. You start to forget when you stay in the front of us. Up and it's up for grabs. No remorse of who I'm taking it from. Numbers I give on my scoreboard is the only form of us staying in touch. That's saying enough. It's time to receive for all of the favors I've done. Too late for y'all to switch teams. Everybody getting big leagues. Product fly. What's in store for us? Known to hit a hole in one, look at the crowd and show the shrug. Shots are limited, I'm scared, mango with the golden gun. Post it up, ready for whatever, boy, you know what's up. Time's close, I whittled them down, stick it to them by sticking around. The gang online, Iwo Jima got one flag and it's sticking the ground. Setting up shop, think I got the message across. Came for the titles and press of the watch, we played the levels of so this hand is actually going to be the hand of the vlog and unfortunately you're going to see why at the end. In this one we're a little short handed and we're going to get a limp from the MP player and I'm going to isolate here with ace 10 offsuit in the cutoff which I think is pretty standard. Now the hope was to get this pot heads up with the original limper but that is what does not happen here as I'm going to pick up three collars in this process. So we're going to go four ways to a flop here with 60 in that comes 10, six deuce, two hearts. Now the action is going to check over to me and I'm going to make a standard C bet here for 25. The only player that's going to decide to continue is the button here to my left. And he's a player that I have labeled as an OMC. To this point, I really haven't seen this player get out of line. He's been very snug and to this point has not shown any bluffs. Every time he's played a hand, he always seems to have it and has been very, very strong with his ranges. So with that being said, I'm actually a little worried here. I'm actually thinking he's actually very strong or at least has a very good draw that has a lot of equity versus my one pair holding. But I do decide to continue to bet here on the turn in real time. I didn't bet too big. I bet $40 and I wanted to just continue to get some value. And I figured if I was beat, he would let me know by raising me which he did not. Now we see the river, which is the three of diamonds. I check over to him. Now my hope is that this is gonna go check, check, and I am most certainly gonna roll over the winner, but he certainly does not check. He does the exact opposite and jams. This is such a gross spot. In real time, I really just wanted to grab a bar fag because I was literally sick to my stomach here. I mean, what kind of play would an OMC be doing this with? But then I started thinking, well, what kind of hands would he have here? Wouldn't he also be afraid that I have a five? I mean, any five makes a straight. Could he have something like ace five of hearts? But would an OMC even play ace five of hearts? I doubt it. Maybe. Probably not, though. Maybe a hand like pocket jacks? But wouldn't pocket jacks just check here because they would be so scared of the run out? I don't know. I just kept thinking I'm getting such a great price here. I just couldn't think of a time that I would actually be good in this spot versus an OMC. So I decided to fold. And would you look at that? He rolls over a massive bluff. It's so dirty. 8-7 offsuit. He had a gut shot on the flop. And on the turn, he had an up and down draw and literally just took my poker soul. I was wrong. He was definitely not an OMC. He was a shark disguised as an OMC. This one definitely hurts. I cannot lie. There is no sugar coating it. He definitely bruised my poker ego. But right now is not the time to tilt. I have to try to get it together, shake that one off, and get this session moving in the right direction. <laughs> you always get the money now though, no matter what. I know, I'll always, always get, get the money no matter what. She's excellent. Why is <laughs> Nice, man. Hidden miles 
stones gone, get your shine on Brighter than an iPhone screen Anybody trying to take a piece of pie home Try some, shape a stick or drop them like a pine cone Conversations about the goals and the gold that I'm sitting on All I hear is low balling digits if I listen to them No need to counter if it's disrespect Swam with shots on how to bite my way out fishing nets yeah. I see the light at the end of the juice Got me swinging for the fans As we move on to the next hand of the vlog, in this one we are looking to rebound from that last hand that didn't go our way, and we're going to look down at pocket jacks in the big blind, and there's going to be four limps before it gets to me, and I will not be checking this back, obviously, so I'm going to put in a raise here to $25. Now I think I definitely could have went a little bit bigger here, but I think $25 is fine, and we're going to wind up going three ways to a flop here, so the original limper is going to come along, as well as the cutoff. So with about 85 in, we're going to see a flop that's pretty good for my hand. That's going to come king, nine, eight, rainbow. I'm going to start with a check here at a position. And the action is going to pretty quickly check around here. And we're going to see a pretty good turn card here, in my opinion, which is the eight of clubs. It feels like this is one of those scenarios where I'm either way ahead or way behind. So now I think I'm ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and bet for value. So I bet 30 here. I would also hate to check behind here again. If I feel like I'm ahead, I want to continue to get value, and I would really hate for a bad card to come, such as an ace or a queen, and then maybe somebody gets there. And as you could see, the original limper continues with a call, and now we're going to see the river, which is the deuce of spades. I check here with every intention of check calling a bet, but he quickly checks, and we roll over our jacks, and they're going to be good. Moving on to the next hand of the vlog. In this one, we're gonna see a limp from middle position, and I'm gonna look down at red aces in the cutoff, and I'm gonna go ahead and isolate here to $20. So I still have my OMC friend right here to the left of me, and I guarantee you he will be calling here, so this is a really great spot for us. I am literally jumping for joy in my seat, and right on cue, he does indeed click the call button. Everyone else is gonna pretty quickly fold here, so we're going to be heads up in this pot here at a position. So with about $40 in, we're going to see a flop that's going to come queen six three with two clubs. So I have already made up my mind from our last hand playing together, understanding what this opponent can do and what he's capable of. There is absolutely no way I'm folding my hand. I will literally be giving him all the money. It doesn't matter. There is nothing he can do to have me fold. Sometimes he might beat me here and he might get there. but. That's just a risk that you have to take when you're playing against a very aggressive player. But what I decide to do is how can I get the most value out of this opponent? He loves to bet, so let's just let him bet. So I start with a check here. And just like I anticipated, he does indeed bet for $25. The last thing I want to do here is raise and have him fold out his hands. I don't want to give him that opportunity to make a good fold. I want him to continue to fire. So I'm just going to check call and allow him to continue to bet. So I stick to the plan and check once again. And just like we continue to think, he fires out another bet. This time the same sizing of $25. Now the same bet on the flop and on the turn is generally always going to be a very weak hand. So we check again, but he quickly rolls over jack high for complete air. And we roll over our aces and they're obviously going to be good. So it was nice to get a little bit of get back there from this player from our last hand where he got us. But more importantly, it's nice to actually start winning a few pots, seeing some things go our way, and slowly starting to make a comeback. Moving on to the last notable hand on the vlog. In this one, we're going to have a tight player open from early position to 15. And I'm going to look down at four deuce of diamonds on the button. And when I actually reviewed this hand later, I actually realized that four deuce of diamonds is actually just a fold here on the button, 
versus a raise first action from early position. And to be honest, I felt like splashing around and I'm on the button so I could get away with it. So we're actually going to drill this flop very hard as we're going to hit trips here. The original raiser is going to continuation bet for $20 and the action is going to fold to me and I'm just going to put in the smooth call here. I don't want to scare him away and if he has a big hand, I'm going to go for a chunky bet on later streets. So everyone else is going to fold and now this pot's going to be heads up between me and the original raiser. Now we're going to see the turn, which is the king of hearts. Now this is a little worrisome of a card, like if he had pocket kings. But when the action gets checked over to me, I still think a bet's going to be in order here, as most of the time I'm going to have the best hand. I'm going to lead here for $50, and if he happens to check raise me, then I'm going to slow down and possibly just call and reevaluate the river. So now this player is going to tank a little bit, and I'm really hoping that he has a hand like aces, maybe even ace king, and I'm really hoping that he's going to put in the call because I'm pretty sure, based on his body language, that I have the best hand. But unfortunately for us, he just folds and we're going to take down a much smaller pot than we hoped for. I would then play one more significant hand as you're seeing the end result here. I would have one player all in and actually both players would hit a gut shot on the river and we would lose a pretty significant pot. But that's how it goes sometimes. You win some, you lose some, but you just got to keep battling. So the totals for both sessions around 10 hours and I wound up losing $190. So that's going to do it for this one, guys. As always, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate the support and I'll catch you on the next one.